Or not? Or not. Okay. Morning, morning, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. So just, just, a, a, just a little overview. We've been currently using ACMS for approximately six years, I think, at Greater Anglia. Yep. Uh, and before that, um, I was using it at, at CGC. Um, well, very well from the start. First nice customer. So, <laughs> um, so basically, we, we, we thought we're using it for competence management uh, and where could we, we go next? So we, you know, we had an aspiration to get rid of all our driver's competence files because as you, many of you know, they can be quite bulky, take up a lot of them, um, sometimes not quite secure um, if the sort of cupboards and that have been left open. So we went on a journey to see what we could do to get rid of them completely and how we could use ACMS to, um, to its fullest and, um, and some of the additional features to, to get rid of the paper um, completely. Um, pleased to say that we um, have managed to do this now with, with all drivers' files at, at all depots. Um, to, to enable us to do this, we um, I guess working with the advisors and sister quite closely to um, you know, help us build new tabs or new features in, in the current tabs, for example. Um, we asked for a new medical tab to, to be added, or a new section in the medical tab to be added. Um, we heavily use the supporting documents tab. Um, we've created a, a new publications and equipment tab. Um, We've added a section to record any mitigation techniques that driver signs up for for development plans or, for example, any driver that's passed out since uh, 2010, we mandate to use what we call press, call and react. So we record that in there. That also shows up on their complimentary certificate on their um, EU licence. Um, we've adopted the bulletin mode uh, module, um, which we obviously use to push out all wands, ponds, all publications, uh, driving policies, etc. Um, the forms function, and now that that was quite big for us to, to be able to go paperless because we use that, that quite quite a bit. Um, we've created a series of uh, schedules for uh, development plans. So we no longer have the paper development plan, we can do it all on ACMS. Um, and obviously the next akin details that you guys develop, we, we've obviously used that um, to, to record all the, all the um, competence, uh, all the next akin details. For example of the, the medical tab, um, so we, we needed to distinguish between um, a, a review medical and a referral medical because they're not quite the same thing. So review medical, see the doctor wants to see you back after going for a, a, you know, a periodic medical, or if we want to send someone for, um, say, they an incident resulting in an incident and they've they've said that um, there's trouble trouble sleeping, so we we send them for a referral. So we wanted to distinguish between the two of them. So the, the, the guys that uh, have, have kindly put that extra uh, tab in for us. Uh, supporting documents. Now, this this was, for want of a better word, the dumping ground for everything we couldn't find a home for. Um, for example, um, copies of the driver's job description and, and safety responsibility statement. We just scanned that in, uploaded it to supporting documents, um, along with um, other things. So, at the start, when we started the process, we uploaded the um, publications and equipment card before we managed to develop the actual um, tab. For that, so anything basically we couldn't find a home for, that's where it went. And on most of your systems, that's called candidate data, by the way, not oh, okay. supporting documents. But yeah. So yeah, we changed the name. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then we we thought, why have the, the paper publication equipment card? We'd like a, a tab on its own, so we we put that together. Now we, you guys developed the system, so we can able to to make our own tabs. And basically, we've set that up. It's very similar to the way the root and traction um, tabs are set up. So we, we put all the, the publication equipment in there, the sign for by um, when the driver manager does the, initially sets it up. We set it for a set set period. I think we set it for 55 years. Is that uh, Steve? Uh, and then it's, every summary is updated. If something it comes out or anything new goes in, um, it's assessed by the driver manager and a new date put um, 
put to that. So again, very similar to the root contraction tab. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the, the compulsory mitigation technique tab, um, and this is basically so we rec can record what the driver signed up for as part of any development plans. So, for example, if the driver has a, uh, a station overrun, um, we, we might want to use them to use our training uh, uh, commentary. So um, we've got a full record of that, so no one forgets what they've signed up for. And again, this, this um, again, we ask the guys to to put this on to the supporting uh, the EU certificate. So there's a section on there that records it. So it's a reminder for the driver as well that they, they should be should be using it. And once they've signed up for it, they sign up for for life, um, not just for the, the length of the plan, but and that, and that will always stay on there unless it's removed. Um, so the bulletin module, I guess you guys know what, what the bulletin module is about. Um, this for us was, was you know, brilliant. It means we can issue like a driving policy, we can update it when we want um, and just up, up issue it rather than having to go the expense of going to, to a printer's um, for, you know, 800 copies of, of the policy, which obviously can be quite, quite expensive. Um, I guess it, no, I'm not going to go into the bulletin module because I guess you all know how it works. But for this for us, is, is, it's been very useful in cutting costs and um, and also going paperless because all, all the publication receipts are signed for through the bulletin module and not a piece of paper. So the forms tab. So we've created a lot of forms. For instance, um, for example, if a driver's on um, long-term medication, we had a paper form for it to record what that, that was. So we, we created the forms tab. Um, the only thing we can't do with it is seal it because once it's sealed, it's sealed. So we leave, we leave it in draft and then the driver manager um, can update if necessary, if, if the driver's put on um, any medication or if they come off, they can remove it quite, quite easily. Um, we also create a suite of, of forms for file verification. So, uh, at a summary point, when the driver manager has closed the file off, the, the lead driver manager or the senior train crew manager can then go in and verify that file is complete um, and make sure that the new schedules have been set up correctly. Um, we also use it a lot for, uh, heavily for signing off trainee drivers. So, where the trainee driver comes from, the, finishes the training school that the um, senior tr uh, training managers or the head of driver training will go in and complete the verification form for that stage of the training, hands that off to the driver manager. Then the, they go out obviously with the DI. Um, once the driver manager's then completed the five day assessment, comes to op standards and says, um, these guys ready to go. We, we've got a, an online uh, ACMS form to, to complete the um, verification of that. And obviously that, these forms stay on the drivers competence files um, yeah, for, for you know for life um, and we, we keep coming and coming up with other solutions for forms as well for example for driver manager recording their their driving hours um, so we've got a form for that so um, again they don't have to complete the paperwork and and, and uh, put it in a, a, a bulky file um, there's, there's a lot more examples that, that we could give you um, that's, that's helped go paperless. So, I mean, if anyone does want any more information, please, please drop me an email, phone call, um, come and see us, or we can arrange a you know, Teams call and I can talk you through whatever, whatever you might need, the questions you might have, unless I've got any questions. At all, you got some. Yeah, great. I've got some. Should have talked a bit longer, no, yes. I'm the time. <laughs> yeah, long. <laughs> so, um, there's a few questions here. Uh, this one's from Andrew Taylor. Would it be possible to link... S oh, this is self-assessment, so I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, we'll do that one at the end. Uh, one from Stuart Player. Using Bulletin, do you undertake checks to ensure everyone has downloaded the document? Is there an easy way of a, of a dashboard to see this? So, we do, um, but we run a report. So the driver managers uh, regularly, or the lead driver managers run a report regularly to just to make sure they've all been signed for um, and whether they've understood it or not. So they can then go back to the driver to, to find out why they don't understand it and, and put that, that right. But it's all done by running a bulletin, uh, running a, a report on, on the bulletin module. Uh, I've got... Is that all right, Stuart? <laughs> oh, you're in trouble. Um, 
One from Alex Walker. Is the publications and equipment tab available now for everyone? If so, I must have missed it. It's so I, th I think I think the, the answer to that is you can build it yourself. Yeah. 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 It's Alex. It's a configurable resource, um, so you can you can data build that. Yeah. If you are you in the room, Alex, or are you online? No, he's not here. He's online. Um, if you have a word with the team, Alex, they'll show you how to do that. But yes, it's it very is, easy to do. Very easy. It, and, it, and it is absolutely available to anyone, and you can call it what you like. You can call it equipment and publications instead of publications and equipment, if you like. One here from Annabelle Marks. Can we merge hearing and sight medicals with the main medical tab, please? Seems like a duplication adding it in multiple tabs. Shall I take that one? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul's going to go, yeah, of course you can. Sorry. Well, what? <laughs> I'm just, let's go. Is he going to know about I was just being polite. I think there's two answers to that. One is, it's a good candidate for a wizard. Alice, write it on your list. Um, and secondly, there are some going to be some improvements to the candidate dashboard for better visualisation, which um, Hannah will talk about a bit later. So yes, is the, is the short answer. Uh, hold on. I've got a couple... Uh, so another question from Stuart Player. Are Assess Tech developing a better verification process for random sampling of assessor work and also to undertake a 100% check of trainee assessors? Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to say something about that? You're going to say something about that this afternoon, really, aren't you? Um, not specifically about that, but yes. What I'd like to do is not do that on our own, but maybe set up a little working group so we can streamline that better. So uh, we'll give you, you said yes, you said yes, anyone else, we will, if you shout, we will make, we will make that happen. Maybe with an operator that's on your patch, that might help. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, definitely, yes, we will, yes. Thank you for volunteering, Stuart. <laughs> uh, question from Rich Taylor, oh gosh, they're coming in thick and fast. How does the candidate sign, oh hang on it moved, how does the candidate sign to say they're in possession of equipment and publications and is this auditable? So when, um, if they issued any new um, publications or, or equipment, uh, the driver manager will issue it to them um, and then they will enter the date it's issued and issued by um, and that comes up on the actual, um, next to the name on the, on the um, Publications equipment card, very similar to the way you do routes and traction. Uh, another one from Richard Taylor. How did you scan upload paper content of the driver's safety files in bulk? <laughs> it took it took a, a, a very long time, to be honest, um, and and probably drove the driver management team nuts and, to, to start with. But um, we started with a, one of the smaller depots to see how it, how long it would take. Um, but it was quite time consuming, but once done, it, it, it's complete and, and it's basically freed up cupboard spaces and, that, and even in some locations, freed up an office for, for um, uh, people to work in. Um, just to say, we don't, have a, we don't have a solution for bulk scanning, but we do have a solution for bulk uploading. So if you've got lots of PDFs, we do have a tool we could use to import them all for you. But there are also companies that do bulk scanning I mountain, for example. There are yeah, we we did it you. by individual file uh, and then uh, uploaded the relevant um, PDF to, to wherever we wanted to put it. Uh, question from Adrian Champion. Candidate data, which is what you call supporting documents, list gets very long. Is there a way to organise the data better? There well, is. Uh, um, so it's possible for us to add uh, different data types. You can start categorizing um, files within the candidate data tab. Um, so for example, we could do ETDL um, data and then you can easily sort through and find the relevant files. So that's something that we can implement. So we will come and speak to you about that. <laughs> some, some of ours are getting quite, quite yeah. long, so we have to be careful where we put it. When we was um, signing off a training driver file for uh, we were at the time when the drive manager just uploaded everything to supporting documents so what we've done now is said don't load it up to there load it up to say day five assessment so we, we know where it all is to just try and keep the supporting documents to a, a readable uh, list 
Yeah, Adrian, this is a requirement we've had before. In fact, when, as Alice says, we're putting categories in, and then the view will be you'll be able to you'll be able to have sub tabs on that tab, so you can view one category or another. Everybody, gosh, that had five likes. That question, mm -hmm. good question. Um, one from Joe Kilner. How does the driver sign to agree any driving technique, RTCD, etc.? So we we do that through um, the actual development plan schedule. So when we, we, we do the initial setup for the plan, um, the driver manager will put in a summary of the incident and then we'll get the driver to complete the candidate um, section of, of that um, and then by them putting their pin in and, and sealing it, um, that's them signing to say they agree to do it. So it's all done through the initial setup on the um, schedule for the development plan. Perfect. And I've got a, quite, a couple of questions now, which is back on the previous topic. Before I go to that, are there any more questions for Paul? Uh, can you can you get, get a mic, please? Because the people online won't be able to hear you. Thank you. I can hear you, but we can hear you. <laughs> we can see. No, no. Uh, Paul. Hey. Just out of interest, <laughs> what do you do if a driver doesn't is is found not to be following their commitments after they've signed and agreed that they would do it for the rest of their career? So it, we've written into our our standard. If if they have a further incident and they fail to to um, um, use before have failed to use the commitment. Um, if it's just one one occasion, then we'll, we'd probably then re put it in the development plan and stress the importance of it. Um, if if it's two to, or two occasions, then we'd put them to a safety performance review. Got an another question here from Justin Willett. Is there a way? Oh, these keep moving as I'm reading them. Is there a way for a specific and structured profile export with contents list? So it forms a pack that being, can be used for things like safety panels. So cu currently, I'd say the answer is no, and we have to download everything. Um, if if the, the you know the chair of the panel wants a hard copy, we have to physically download everything and put it in a pack ourselves. So that would be a great feature. Well, yeah. So in fact, in fact, if there is a particular <laughs> format you want, you can have that already. It would be a report. You just need right. to raise Sorry, the red mic. Stuart, again. you do. Um, do you, would you use that the report that you requested before to do that, or is that too much information? Uh, no, it's too much. It's basically... Sorry, can you use the mic? Because people online won't be able to hear you. Sorry. We do have uh, folders in effect because the union reps do like them hard copy to actually pen through. But we say in section one, print this report, section two, print this report, section three, and so on and so forth. It would be probably useful to be able to say, well, I'm doing a development employee, EPE, and say, print the lot. Yeah, that would be, I think mean, that's a report there. So if we work out what you want in that report, we can do that and that will come out as a, just a single report with all the information you need. The one I'm talking about with Stuart is um, if there is a larger scale incident that needs um, a full download of a safety critical person's, all their information, um, but there is a report that, that, can, that we can implement that will take, that you can then give to the authorities. We, we do try and encourage the, the, the panel to look on ACMS. But as you probably all well, some some people just like that paper copy. But what we did, I have found useful, is the download all button on the incidents, where yep. you can download them all rather than doing them individually, which is is, is useful. Um, it also occurs to me that we could make a wizard that was a that let you pick which reports you wanted to run and run them all. Right? Yes. Yeah. Pat, could you nip that for Tim, please? <clears throat> Uh, hi, hi, that's working. Um, yeah, this isn't directly related to Paul's presentation. We just sort of sat here thinking while we're discussing it. So we, um, probably a lot of the talks and, and Fox will have a sort of standard that sort of says, you know, if you've had X, Y, and Z incident in, in, in X time, then something will happen, whatever that is. Um, and, and obviously we will um, report our safety of the line records now into ACMS. And we had an incident 
or, or, or an instance the other day where um, an incident occurred with the driver that should have triggered a certain level of our process and was missed. Um, and just sort of thinking about sort of, you know, some of the uh, sort of wizards and the data that we're talking about here, uh, it doesn't sound like it would be impossible to get ACMS to automate some of that. So, you know, if we sort of, sort of add on a stop short, and that means that now something has to happen in that uh, driver's world, then it pings up and says, you know, six month plan or need a review yep. panel or whatever it is, which might just um, help to uh, reduce that human error possibility. So if we can always, always note those things down so we can... So I, I, I think that's a really interesting idea, actually. And I think we might be inviting you to a focus group to talk about that, sir. <laughs> I, I, can I somebody, think... Hannah, if you, can you make a brief note? Thank you. I think that, yeah, it's a good, it's a good idea, but it all dependent on how your actual process works. Um, we've completely just changed our way our 8.9, uh, our driver competence system works. And we, we no longer issue, uh, put the driver on a plan for the incident. We put them on a plan, the length of the plan, depending on what we put in there as, as sort of um, learning outcomes or development outcomes. So it's not incident related, it's about the content of the plan. So it... thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, sir.